Welcome to Ag Vision. I'm Kevin Stewart. If we could see a show of hands from farmer viewers watching and I asked how many of you have had a close call in terms of safety on the farm, I would bet every single person watching would have their hand up. I can think of a handful of uh, occurrences on our own farm right off the top of my head. Self-reliance, shortness of time, economic pressures, they all combine to ensure that accidents have always been a part of farming. But Knowing how to prevent accidents should also be a part of agriculture. On the show today, the Executive Director of the Canadian Agricultural Safety Association, Marcel Acco, will join us to describe a change that is occurring in attitude towards safety on the farm, primarily with the younger generation of producers. But first, everyone understands that agriculture is a business commonly impacted by factors beyond our control, such as market fluctuations and weather. Incredibly, one thing we largely can control, we often don't. Nearly 100% of farm accidents are completely preventable. A look now at how to childproof your farm. Teenager lost his arm in a farm accident today when he tried to unplug the header of a combo. Fourth farm accident in the past two weeks in the Tri-County area. Authorities report the toddler was playing near a farm pond when she slipped on the muddy embankment and A ten-year-old girl nearly drowned today in a grain cart which was being filled with canola. Agriculture is the third most dangerous industry in Canada with respect to rates of fatal injury. In terms of absolute numbers of fatalities, however, there is no more dangerous occupation. Statistically, youth aged 15 to 19 years are most likely to be hospitalized due to a farm accident. However, it's the children under five years of age that suffer the highest rate of death. 95% of accidents are actually preventable. Marcel Acco says there is one family member in particular at the greatest risk of all. If you look at the statistics, it's boys. Overwhelmingly, it's boys that get hurt. And I think the reason is boys want to be with dad. Usually the fathers are the ones uh, working and they'll bring their son with them. And uh, again, a, a, a child is no match for equipment, large animals, or, or to be unattended. Well, I can remember one time um, we were uh, bailing. It was uh, one summer day, I believe it was hay. And we had an uh, elevator up in a barn, real high. I don't know how long it would have been, maybe 35 feet, maybe. And um, we were letting it down, and there's a crank handle to let the elevator down. And a few of us were standing underneath the elevator, actually, or, or real close by. And the person letting it down actually let go of the handle. So the elevator uh, basically dropped to the ground because there's nothing underneath it. And uh, just like a, maybe a foot away, we just missed the elevator coming down. So if uh, that came down on anybody, it wouldn't have been a good scene. Data gathered by the Canadian Agricultural Injury Surveillance Program may challenge some assumptions about how these accidents happen. Two-thirds of all fatal agricultural injuries among children and youth involve machines. 88% of these were work-related. ACO believes that this is an indication that children are not receiving proper training, supervision, and age-appropriate tasks. Farms typically function as a workplace and a home. For children, the entire farm may be viewed as their place to explore and play. Experts suggest it requires time and guidance for children to recognize and comprehend the risks around them. If you treat it like a workplace and you try and keep your kids away from the workplace, so you have your home and you have your workplace. And if you absolutely have to bring them on the workplace, uh, treat it like an employee who knows nothing. Uh, how old is the kid? What can he do? So train him. Show him, just because he's your son or your daughter doesn't mean genetically he's going to know what to do. So teach him how to do the job, make sure it's age appropriate, uh, what the hazards are, and make sure you understand the communication signals that, that you use. Uh, a good one is see eye to eye. If you can see my eyes, I can see your eyes. At least we know where we are. Family member lost an arm in a, uh, a grill device on the back of a sea drill and it affected my children's father is so deeply that when our children were born and we were raising them on the farm, we were absolutely adamant that they'd be safe. They were not allowed on the equipment, they were not allowed to drive with anyone on tractors. 
They were taught to stay away from all large pieces of equipment and we didn't allow them to learn to drive equipment until we knew that they were old enough and had the common sense to do it. The first step in making your farm an accident-free zone for children is to identify the trouble spots. Machines, dugouts and animals are the most dangerous places. More specifically, a study by the Mayo Clinic of children who were seriously injured in farm accidents has found that machinery and large animals account for 71% of injuries. Authors of the study conclude that many such injuries could be prevented with better education and supervision on the farm. This troublesome trend is emphasized by data from the Canadian Agricultural Injury Surveillance Program, which shows that fully 70% of the victims involved in machinery-related accidents were run over by equipment operated by family members. The second step to accident-proof your farm is make a list, keep it simple, and stick to it. While supervision is key, it's not always possible on the farm. One solution to this challenge is to provide a designated, fenced, and well-designed safe play area. When it comes to equipment, no riders. Before moving equipment, ensure you've made eye contact with any children nearby. Don't allow children to play with idle machines. Leave hydraulic equipment in the down position. Don't assume your kids know what you know about tasks or safety. And farm ponds and manure storage should be properly fenced. It's as simple as not putting your leftover Roundup in a Pepsi bottle. Keeping your Roundup in the container, in the shed, away from kids. I was filling a tanker up with water from the river um, what I used to take to a field for the dry cows uh, using a uh, tractor with an unguarded PTO shaft. Luckily I had a, a big big oversized raincoat which was my father's, miles too big for me, uh, and it caught in the shaft and luckily it just whipped it straight off my back and right off my arms. And I'll never go near one again. Well, everybody's had a close call, and if you want, my close call is, is when I was a kid. Uh, we had a, a grain auger, one of the cr crank up ones with the ratchets, and of course, for some reason, the, the ratchet didn't work, the handle, and you probably notice on my forehead a nice little bump, uh, got knocked out cold. When you boil it down, nearly every farm accident is preventable. Kids don't drown in grain if they're not in the grain truck. A dugout is like a large swimming pool, so fence it off. You don't ride in the front end loader. And what is a child doing playing around a PTO? That feature, by the way, was originally part of FCC's Ag Day in Canada celebration. Coming up next on Ag Vision, we'll speak directly with the Executive Director of the Canadian Agricultural Safety Association, Marcel Echo. He says we're beginning to see a change in attitude towards safety on the farm, suggesting that preventative action and awareness is increasingly apparent with younger farmers. Across Canada, you're watching AgVision.